Good morning and welcome to YouTube Live on another very sunny Tuesday in the UK. Um, I'm delighted to introduce today Manuel da Costa, who is the founder of Effective Experiments. Um, and today, oh. uh, yeah, hello, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, today, we're not going to ask you anything about conversion rate optimization. We're not going to ask you anything about your job or your role with this whole Beyond the Title series is about going beyond your role and beyond what you do on a day to day basis and find out a bit more about you as a person. If that's okay. That sounds good, though I can't promise uh, that I won't be talking about experimentation because it's such a big part of, <laughs> of, of me and what I do. So it might be name dropped every now and then. But we will I'm see. sure that'll be fine. <laughs> uh, more than fine, in fact. Uh, so first question, what is your ikigai? And that for anyone um, uninitiated, ikigai is a Japanese phrase, meaning the reason you jump out of bed each morning or your reason for being. See, I told you I'd fail, right? Uh, experimentation <laughs> is again going to feature in that. So for me, like uh, I, I'm a passionate believer in the power of experimentation and and being able to share that with with our clients or with with other people that I've come that I come across is actually a big motivator for me. Um, you know, I'm not one that wakes up in the morning to, uh, to to feel happy and all that kind of stuff, all, all those fluffy feelings. <laughs> For me, it's, it's firmly about how can I make that difference in the world or how can I change someone's mindset a little bit to, to help them uh, or help them move forward. And when I talk about experimentation, I'm not just talking about business and making money, but I think it's it just that mindset of like, how do we keep moving forward in life by just tweaking and testing and optimizing uh, I think that uh, motivates me a lot. So uh, being able to wake up in the morning and think, you know, who am I going to help today uh, with that mindset? Who am I going to help um, and, and maybe uh, move them along in their in their journey? Um, that's, that's kind of my motivator. That's fantastic. Thank you. Which movie character best represents you and why? Uh, so I, I don't know if I can say Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but uh, there's a film called Moneyball, uh, and uh, it's a film about baseball. Uh, and even though I'm not a big baseball fa uh, fan or follower, um, I watch uh, this film, and uh, this guy basically uh, puts together a team based on data and using, going against traditional kind of wisdom of setting up teams for success. And th there's th this team that does really badly, and he comes in as a coach. And instead of using traditional wisdom that's been applied all along, uses uh, stats and uses data to kind of mold this team together. Uh, even though a lot of the, the uh, people, uh, the other people were skeptical about it and kind of brings in a lot of success. So I, I kind of think that, uh, you know, I relate to that. Again, it's Brad Pitt. I'm not saying I'm Brad Pitt, but... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a, it's a great film. I've seen it again. Someone that that's not that's not into the sport at all, um, but it's you know it's his perseverance. It's like trust me or you know trust my data and trust the results. <clears throat> and it's about someone yeah. kind of having the um, you know sort of accepting and going okay, we'll give it a go, um, even if against it goes against their better judgment, and then just listening to the listening to the data and then you know the results speak for themselves. Yeah, and, and as you said, uh, it, it, you may not be into that kind of, uh, you know, that sport, but again, a lot of sports these days apply the same similar mentality uh, in, the, in, in England, the Premier League, for example, yeah. uh, cricket, you know, they, they all kind of apply uh, similar principles. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Which app could you not live without and why? That may have changed over the past eight weeks. <laughs> So it, it depends. I mean, uh, do you mean um, a work app or do you mean a general app or, or uh, generally? You know? Either whichever you'd like to talk about or you can tell us both. Uh, so work wise, obviously Slack. I can't live without Slack. Uh, it's it's or, or even Zoom. I mean, it's, this is a hard choice. right? Because, <laughs> uh, Slack and Zoom are like the bread and butter of, of any work from home. Um, and and we uh, me and my team have always been remote work from home, work from anywhere kind of right. thing. So. Uh, having Slack, having Zoom keeps me connected with the team. Um, and uh, to looking at uh, uh, non-work related apps, uh, uh, Facebook, because we're old. <laughs> so, uh, so Facebook again, uh, and, and uh, funnily enough, I've been wasting a lot of time on TikTok as well. Uh, just if I'm, if I'm just uh, really tired or I need just a, a boost, I'll just mindlessly scroll on TikTok, just give have, myself a laugh. Have you been tempted to 
attempt any of the dance oh, routines no. on TikTok. Oh no, I'm I'm not one of those people to start doing dance routines on there. I I I like looking at some funny videos. I, I used to follow Vine a long time ago. Oh me um, too. And and some of them were like hilarious. And so when TikTok came along, um, I I kind of accidentally discovered it. I was like, oh, this is this is interesting. Two hours later, I was still there. <laughs> so yeah. It's there for my for when I when I just want to unwind. If anything, everyone's got to have a switch off guilty pleasure. <laughs> what advice would you give to your twenty one year old self? Ah, uh, my twenty one year old self. Um, I think um, being being comfortable taking detours. Uh, let me explain. Um, in in life or in any anything in business, you have uh, a goal. And people tend to think of a goal as a linear progression. So you're here at point A and you want to be at point point B and you can go from here to there really quickly. Uh, But life uh, or, you know, in in general, isn't like that. It'll be topsy-turvy. You'll you'll go back uh, two steps forward, one step back. Uh, And uh, it's just about being comfortable with that and knowing that that's part of the process. Uh, I think in the early days, I'd be really frustrated if I wanted to do something and it didn't happen in the time scale I wanted it to. Sure. So uh, it's, yeah, it's just being comfortable with that. That's great advice. Um, and again, I think that's advice that people at any age could definitely take on board more. Um, I once saw a very silly thing that was taking one step forward and two steps back um, isn't a failure. It's actually a salsa. Um <laughs> 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 That's pretty good, that. I quite like that one. Um, yep. Slightly scarier question. What's the harshest feedback you've ever received? Uh, so when I was young, I was wo- working in an office job uh, and I thought I was doing fairly well. Uh, and uh, uh, the manager there was um, was talking about, the, you know, um, f- further responsibilities and, and, a, and a, a step up in the role. Mm. Uh, and in in the the review meeting uh, I was told you're not good enough for this I was like I thought I ticked every box and uh, I thought I had done everything and the 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 signs were there you know I was being given good feedback along the way I uh, later learned it was less to do about whether I was good enough or not but more about the politics in the place I think at that mm-hmm. point I was like I need to do something on my own at this point so I kind of moved uh, on to doing my own stuff and running my own business, which I still do uh, to this day. Uh, but I think that kind of spurred me on. It was harsh, uh, whether it was fair or not. You know, again, I could, uh, there may be a different side to the story, which I don't know, uh, but it worked out for the best. <laughs> so, yeah. Definitely. Um, this isn't an official question, but when, so when did you go out on your own and start your own business? So in about 10, 11 years, no, actually 12 years now. Brilliant. So quite quite a long time ago <laughs> and it might have been 12 right years it, it feels like 12 years in this lockdown already so it's probably <laughs> 24 years <laughs> what's the biggest leadership challenge you're facing during the current crisis um so this one is is not so much a uh, um a leadership challenge I, I know the crisis is hard for everyone uh, for our business fortunately it hasn't been that way uh it, it's been mild i mean we've had like some customers churn and stuff like that but it's mm-hmm. about my main um thing is making sure that my team are looked after and they don't have the worry that something's gonna happen to them or cool. you know them have to lose their job and stuff um and and that's pri- uh, you know primarily the challenge is again not a challenge it's just something that's been top of mind for me trying to keep my team happy and, and motivated i mean they're always motivated that's not the, uh, the challenge but um with everything going on around i mean there are days when i feel like oh it's a bit it's too much so what i don't want is them ha- having to think about the same things and and also think like oh will we have a job tomorrow because a lot of people as you know have been furloughed in the uk or made redundant or even mm-hmm. lost their jobs um uh for me uh, keeping my team satisfied is uh, is one of the biggest challenges. The other thing as well is is um, trying to balance out resources to be there for our customers as well, but also for people that are that are um, 
in the industry because I've, I've made sure that I may, uh, gave up, gave some of my time back to help people in the industry. It, it's just juggling all of that along with this stuff happening around. So it can be a mental strain, but yeah, that's a challenge I've been facing. Sounds like you're handling it incredibly well. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> do, really. Um, so the world is changing. Um, what are your predictions for the new normal in the digital world 2.0? Um, well, I think there'll be a, a greater emphasis on digital. I think we, on our webinar, we talked about how uh, retailers that were literally forced overnight to change their, their entire way of working. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's that greater focus on, on online, uh, the customer experience online, which I think is going to be the biggest shift. Uh, in the past, it was like, yes, we have a website. Yes, we have this customer experience. There is, in some cases, there have been you know, lip service to, to that. But now I think it's going to become the keystone for a lot of businesses. Um, and, and I think uh, talking about better UX, better, better customer experience, uh, a focus on the customer journey and conversion optimization as well. Again, see, I told you I can't keep it out of it. Um, like will will be uh, a, a focus, and I think that's where I think it's going. Definitely, I mean, it, it's so pro I, it, this is so proved. Um, E-commerce is or, or websites necessity. Um, we've we've had a we've had a talk before, haven't we, about sorts of stores that don't have a, an online e-commerce offering, um, and just how detrimental that's been. Um, yeah. but you're right if if things are going to change to digital then we need to have that fantastic in-store feeling from a laptop correct correct and and a lot of these businesses are now um, having to shift uh, drastically and and the ones that are are, are are done well you know as I say have have had something in place uh, we in our webinar we talked about Primark having nothing in place yeah. and that kind of going from everything to nothing overnight uh, so yeah, if um, if businesses want to survive in this, well, uh, as you call it, digital world 2.0, then a greater focus, the probably the, a, you know a huge focus on this. What changes do you think are here to stay? Uh, in industry I think, terms? Uh, generally speaking, I think a lot of um, businesses will adopt this work from home uh, kind of mindset. Um, so I think that's. Uh, hopefully going to stay for a lot of businesses because it allows a lot of flexibility and I've been you know, a champion of, of work from home, work from anywhere for, for a long time. Uh, again, businesses have been forced to, to adopt this. Uh, in the past, they've been hesitant. Now they've seen actually it doesn't really have an impact on, on productivity. It does, I mean, in a positive impact, but it doesn't have a mm. negative impact on, on the work done. So yeah, why not? Or a blend of, of two. Uh, but greater emphasis on um, the work-life balance. Because now we see, you know, people are spending more time at home with their families. Uh, I think it, uh, hopefully that should be the one that should stay, um, in my opinion. We'll see. Brilliant. What are your hopes for the future? Uh, my hopes for the future? To be able to go out of the house <laughs> for a change, the short term at least. Um, um, well, I think um, generally speaking, for, for again, without sounding too political and stuff like that, for governments to really look at the data and make decisions actually based on data. Um, yes. I, know, I know the word uh, guided by science gets thrown out quite a, a lot, uh, but it's hard to, um, hard to accept that they're guided by science. So I, I, I hope that people are actually guided by science uh, rather than, than, again, I, I don't want to go too political or, or anything of that sort. But in general, like if, if uh, there is a greater emphasis on education and science, I think future generations will, will be in a much better position than we are in right now. I agree. I mean, there's one senior cabinet member who a few years ago said people were sick of experts. Um, and, I, and I think we've, I, think, I, I don't think you'd be saying that right now. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> yeah. But again, we won't go too political. Yeah, but exactly, exactly. Experts yeah. are great. Scientists are great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We right? can agree because on that. We can, and and this is the thing at at such a crucial moment. Um, 
there's this uh, again tug of war uh, where you know scientists are saying one thing politicians want to do something else mm. uh, but this can apply to any aspect of life as well you've got data telling you something use that to your to your advantage because that's going to help you in the long run don't shoot yourself in the foot uh, so, yeah good advice thank you please can you tell us one weird fact about you uh, sorry i think i lost you for a second <clears throat> Sorry, uh, please can you tell us one weird fact about you? Okay. Uh, the, I don't know if, if I'm the only one uh, doing this. I hope I'm not. But um, <laughs> I, I cannot, um, if, I'm, if I'm trying to brainstorm ideas, if I'm trying to come up with plans or something, I, I tend to pace about the room just talking to myself really loudly to a point if someone walks into the room, they think I'm, I've gone crazy. Uh, again, I hope I'm not the only one that does that. But <laughs> I, I cannot sit still and just, think it through in my brain I have to like converse with myself uh so yeah there we go I think whatever works for you whatever whatever your thought processes are your your, your tips and tips and tricks for for being product productive um and making decisions um I don't think that's weird at all Fair enough. <laughs> um uh, and our final question thank you so much for uh joining me this morning um thank you. thanks for having me on pleasure uh so to finish with what is your motto in life um, this may sound cheesy, but uh, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Uh, so it's always trying to push yourself. Uh, things that you want to reach are not comfortable. It may take time. It may take a lot of effort. And it may not even get to where you want it to be. But to really um, get somewhere, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Um, and that's, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say that sums up my motto. That's brilliant. Thanks again, Manuel. Um, and thank you for everyone that tuned in to YouTube Live for the latest in the series of Beyond the Title with Manuel da Costa from Effective Experiments. Hope to see you very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.